So I'm currently in the process of writing out my own documentation. It's for the Nizi starter kit that I released a few weeks ago. Throughout this week, I really thought to myself, hey, I need to write documentation because there's a lot of things to set up. Why not learn how to do it? Because I may have to do it in the future as well. So I sat down, I watched a few tutorials. I actually read a few documentations, no pun intended, and I actually developed my own documentation. And so what I'd like to do in this video is just show you how to develop your own documentation, how I did it. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll understand how to write your own documentation, the different aspects that go into a documentation and most importantly the good principles that I followed or tried to follow to make my own documentation clear for developers to read this is what it looks like again it's for the Nizi starter kit so here we have the introduction page it looks like most documentation as you can tell we have different aspects I kind of just put stuff together where it's just random aspects of the application and these are the main things I have so stuff like app setup dashboard authentication where it has like the next auth and OAuth it also has stripe and the tech stack that we wrote so for example the main goal of this was the user can click on, hey, how do you set up Stripe or how does Stripe work on this starter kit? They can click on Stripe and then here they have like a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up Stripe in their own application, including things like videos, uh, titles and chapters, and most importantly, the code that they need to set up Stripe. And so you may be saying right now, Nazar, you damn genius. I'm not a genius. How did you make this so fast? Because again, I did this in like two days and luckily for us, developers that are much better than you and I have solved this problem and I was watching a video by web dev Cody and I found this tool called Nextra. Now Nextra is a library that allows developers to write their own documentation much easier through the templates that they got. So all I had to do right was go to Nextra, click on deploy over here and I'll leave this in the link below and all I really just had to do was just create a repository and then create it and deploy it to Vercel. And then so what they give you is a page like this where I just called it Nextra docs and it's basically just a Next.js application with MDX as the main language language. And so how this works, right, is once you, you know, deployed it to Vercel or whatever you did, you have your template and you ran npm run dev, you're given a template over here with basically everything you need to write out your own documentation. And here's what I mean by this. And so if you go to the pages section over here in the Nextra documentation that you just deployed, you can see we are given a couple of .mdx files of different pages. And so what MDX is, is markdown language. It's a quote unquote coding language was created in in order to be the closest thing you write to English. And so if you're reading this, you can probably tell what it is. You have the iframe here with the video, you have the title and you have the image over here. Basically, you just write English to write code. It's not really code, it's more so text, but you know what I mean. But anyways, before we get into like the good practices and what I followed, um, to develop the actual sidebar over here, all I had to do is go into the meta JSON and just write out the main pages of my application. For example, the introduction, the app setup, the dashboard, the authentication, the Stripe. I just went through all the main things of my application and I just wrote it. And you can see over here, we have the introduction, right here, introduction, app setup, app setup, dashboard, dashboard, authentication, et cetera, et cetera. And then how I developed the actual pages was I just created, let's say this is like the index.mdx, this is the main page. All I had to do is just create a file called index.mdx. And within here, I just wrote basically English. It's a lot easier than I thought. For example to write out a big header I just had to have one hashtag with the introduction and then to write basic text you just write basic text to put an image I had to do a main.png and then to write a h2 I believe it is you just write two hashtags basically English in its simplest form but I'm going to stop talking about this because you probably already know some of this and so real quick to summarize what we talked about here I'm using Nextra to write out my documentation because it just makes a whole lot of sense like I don't want to write this search bar it's just boring and I don't want to waste time I just want to write my freaking documentation if there's a tool for it, I'm going to freaking use it. And the folder structure kind of works like this, where you in your meta JSON, you're just writing out all the pages in basically plain English. And then to display all the pages, all you have to do is write a .mdx file and display whatever you want. So right now we know where to grab a documentation. We understand the pages and routes of the documentation. How the hell do you write documentation? This was actually quite a challenge for me to do. Like I just followed a tutorial on how to set things up, but writing it actually was a lot more difficult than I thought. So for example, I have next auth and OAuth in my app. I had to just go through step by step of everything you need to set up both the client secrets of the, the OAuth of the GitHub OAuth. And I had to include a lot of images, a lot of different codes. And if you actually go to it, you can see it's a lot of code. You can see it's nearly 157 lines, not really code, a lot of writing nonetheless. And so from what I've learned, this is like the Nizi starter school of documentation. Um, I learned that you kind of have to follow 
follow three main steps. And so the main things is breaking things down into different chapters, displaying code and text as much as possible, finally showing videos or examples of what you're trying to build. I don't have an acronym for that. I'm not even going to try to think of an acronym, but by following this three step process, I think is the best thing you can do for developing your own documentation. And so here's what I mean by this for my OAuth or for my authentication, for example, I didn't just write everything all in one page. I broke it down into different chapters. For example, the first different type of chapter I did was having a next auth chapter and an OAuth chapter. I could have easily put them together and I actually did that initially. The next thing I did, right, is I didn't just include Google OAuth with GitHub OAuth. I had different chapters displaying what they are. So over here, you can see it has GitHub OAuth set up and up here you can see it has google oauth in addition we have different chapters over here where it's like prerequisites uh steps to obtain environment variables and then the same thing went for the github oauth setup and the oauth setup into your own next.js application and then once i had the chapters all set up i literally just went step by step of each chapter the next thing i tried to do was write out all the code for each section with a detailed explanation of everything so as you can see down here when it came time to displaying what the env file was i just tried my best to display what that looked like. It's actually quite easy. All you have to do is write like these three or actually six of the dashed quotes. And then here's the language that we're writing in. So it's ENV file name being ENV, and then just the code displaying what we're writing. And I kind of just followed this process for everything else. I would just write something. And then when it was something like installing a package or doing something big, um, I, I would just write this out. So this is the terminal. So let's actually go to that real quick. The language is in bash, right? So it's in bash. And then the file name is called terminal. So I just wrote that out. And then in here, I just wrote out the code that the user needed so they can just copy it and use in their own app. And so as I was reading through documentation and trying to follow good practices as much as possible, the final thing everyone was talking about was including images where you could not display code. If you go back to our OAuth setup here, I'm going through the different steps that the user needs to set up their environment variables. However, there's different parts where they had to like follow multiple steps where they had to click a button to route to this page and then grab this item. And we couldn't display code in those situations because there's no code to display. And in those sections, what I was told to do is to display an image to give the user a more clear and concise manner of writing. And so in this example over here, we're trying to obtain the GitHub client ID and the secret ID. Um, I just included an image where they had to click. And I did this throughout the whole application where I did the same thing for GitHub OAuth. And I actually did the same thing in the dashboard where I'm like describing the dashboard and the code that comes along with the dashboard. But basically you can kind of think of the image as a replacement of the code where there is no code to write in the first place. And so again, I'll leave this down below. Like I'll make this public for you to copy. And so hopefully this video explained everything you needed to. I wish I kind of had this when I was uh, starting out with this a couple of days ago, but you know what? I didn't find this too difficult. So again, I'll leave everything down below for you to copy. So hopefully you can create your own documentation, happy coding, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.